Nowhere do the powers of good and evil enchant fans quite like they do in competition, where the hero can morph into the villain and right back again in the blink of an eye. It's in this arena that we watch our idols fall from grace right before our eyes, and it's on them to climb back up the mountain. In esports, we need not look further than the Boostmeister himself. He sees them down there, straight headshot, they have no idea. <laughs> Smith's looking confused and dazed, and there's going to be a follow up headshot on the first You've got to be kidding me! It's a 2v4, and it's going to be desperately hard to hold on to. Device around the world we go, but the diffuse, the diffuse is coming in. Has, he's still going! Oh, Olaf just about gets it as the flames come in, and look at the little dance of happiness! Olaf Meister has walked the lines of hero and villain his entire career. From dazzling on the brightest stage and competing with one of the game's first truly dominant rosters. Danny Duin, ladies and gentlemen, your ESL1 Cavalita champion, the Fnatic! It's going to be a third title for Fnatic. They win a third major championship in global offensive to facing widespread criticism over a competitive strat that pushed the game's very boundaries. We have a weird boost going on currently. Yes, look at this boost. Oh, my, oh God. my God, this is beautiful. He can look over oh. to the restrooms as well. To cementing himself as one of the greatest Counter-Strike players to ever play the game. His is the quintessential Counter-Strike story, the embodiment of a game loved by millions. Sure, you may have heard pieces of his story in passing, but this, this is the whole story of Olaf Meister. Olaf Olaf Meister Kyber was born in Tiresu, Sweden on January 31st, 1992. As a kid, he found his competitive niche in soccer and showed a lot of promise as a young player. Well, he was very talented at football. I remember me and my father going to watch most of his games. That's a huge part of his life. And I think he was quite good when he was about 14, 15 years of age. It was in the wake of a soccer injury that stunted his competitive growth that Olaf Meister really started to take Counter-Strike seriously. And that one injury would spark what would become one of the most storied careers in the history of a game loved by millions. When I got injured, we went to a specialist at, uh, in Stockholm and he told me that I couldn't play for a year. I think he was quite sad, sad that then he showed. I actually went home and was really mad and pissed off, but I went, actually went home and played uh, Counter-Strike on that evening. That was the only thing I could do, actually. Olaf Meister started his professional Counter-Strike career as a member of Team Aquintra, before serving as a stand-in for Rage Gaming in 2010. Then came Counter-Strike Global Offensive, where Olaf first joined forces with Crims and Dennis on LGB Esports as the scene was first building its base. And during those early days of CSGO, LGB quickly became known as one of the European scene's most prolific rosters. Smoke him off and he doesn't get any joy there. He is gonna miss that shot and now Olaf Meister flashing through. Is he actually gonna push through this? Yes, he will. This is Olaf Meister. He's definitely one of the most crazy players on this LGB team. And he gets two great shots in. Maybe tries to a third one right now. So two on four and Olaf Meister gets the triple kill. Yeah, make something exactly. Olaf Meister oh. though, he's, good. he's doing his best to triple kill. And Dennis with the, fuck, with the double comes around the corner. Olaf built a name for himself on LGB and that success helped him secure a spot on Fnatic alongside Crims in 2014. Early on in his career, Olaf was widely known for his ability to fill a multitude of different roles. He could wield the mighty AWP. That means they can commit three to mid, and to JW looks for the A main. Olaf gets one, he's gonna look for the second, he gets the second as well, having to back up to the box as a back of Checker, gets the third, there's a fourth one coming in through Checkers, oh. and he takes the four! Oh, Olaf! He was a top rifler. Got walk. Nice nade and recovery coming over the top here, able to pick up one. Oh! oh. You are kidding! That's Oh, Meister <laughs> picks up three That's incredible headshots here with the AK, Olaf and Olaf Meister has been just a great player for LGB. And he could clutch with the best of them. So much so that he will go down in CSGO history, immortalized on the walls of Overpass. It's a 2v4 and it's going to be desperately hard to hold on to. Device around the world we go, but the diffuse, the diffuse is coming in. Has, he's still going! Oh, Olaf just about gets it! The flames come in and look at the little dance of happiness. He could do it all and that's what made him different. He have grown into his role within the team and uh, 
So I think he he have always been capable of uh, being the best player in the world, and obviously that's why we picked him up. It, it it didn't matter who we played or what tournament it was. It was always one in our team that played like the best player in the whole world. In that first year together, Fnatic cemented themselves as one of the best CSGO teams in the world. They won a slew of small events and finished second to NIP at the year's first major, ESL1 Cologne. And here it comes, two on five, JW and Flusher, there is nothing they can do any longer. NIP have won Gamescom 2014, ladies and gentlemen, 16-13, it finally happens. But Olaf's rise was tied to the end of NIP's historic run through the early days of CSGO. And it didn't take long for Fnatic to become the undisputed best team in Counter-Strike, one that fans loved and loved to hate. Of any event in 2014, it was at DreamHack Winter where Olaf Meister showed the kind of player he would eventually become, putting on a show only a superstar could. Bit of a rush out in the middle with a couple of P250s on the terrorist side as Cloud9 is trying to see if they can get a little bit more damage done. Olaf Meister's there though, pretty clean pickoff, has to resort to the C set for the third kill in a row here. And he's kind of alone, he's got one person down on long to help him out, that's Olaf Meister, and he's just landing some really nice shots, so not even any chance. I mean, the bomb actually fell down into CT's yep. spawn. But just as Olaf Meister showed his greatness, the Counter-Strike world turned its back on him. More than anything, they're gonna need to simply win this pistol. And they are playing a pretty standard game, although do they have a weird boost going on currently? Yes, look Olaf at Meister. This boost. Oh my oh god. My god. I just feel it wasn't fair. He can look over oh. to the restrooms as well. It's definitely not fair, it should probably be removed. He sees them down there, straight headshot, they have no idea. It was a dirty trick. Then there's gonna be a follow-up headshot on Olaf Meister! You've got to be kidding me! It's just shameless of them. They still are not sure they're just getting fired at. They're going down! They definitely can't just go, you know, unquestioned. Oh, I think he's just jumping. There it is. All of my stuff. He's raining down death from above! You're never going to get another boost that's that OP, but also wins you the whole map. Back in 2014, cheating was a problem in Counter-Strike. Young players and prodigies alike were looked at with harsh skepticism, and it felt like most were seen as cheaters until proven innocent. So to say this incident occurred at an inopportune time would be an understatement. Heading into the bracket stage, their quarterfinal matchup was against LDLC, a French roster many considered to be the second best team in the world behind Fnatic, and they quickly fell behind. So happy he's going to be able to rotate very quickly and be right on the edge of that smoke. So as Fnatic come through, this kill is going to be crucial, but it looks like Olaf Meister just barely stays alive. Kirishima in the meantime, he's got the Scar 20. Surprise, surprise, gets two, makes it three. And this is it. It's about to be lights out for Fnatic. There isn't a whole lot of hope for Olaf Meister with one HP. Shoxy will hunt him down and LDLC will pick up the crucial first map of this best of three. But Olaf and Fnatic bounce back on cash. Pronax has got this perfectly figured out. Very nice way here to end as he gets a headshot. 16 to 8, and Fnatic bring us on to a third map. That's going to be overpass. What a quarterfinals. This is exactly what we ordered, exactly what we needed here. Until tragedy struck in map 3, where they found themselves down 12-3 on overpass. It is really terrifying at the moment here. Pistol round means everything. Otherwise, Fnatic could end up crashing out of this quarterfinals, essentially, in the final map. That would be a devastating result for them, obviously, on <laughs> home turf here. There's going to be a serious discussion going on right now on the Fnatic side about how to approach this pistol round, because it has to be won. It was then that Olaf and the rest of Fnatic deployed the single most iconic boost in Counter-Strike history. Pretty standard gamer though. Do they have a weird boost going on currently? Yes, look at my this boost. Oh, oh my god. Oh my god, this is beautiful. He can look over oh. to the restrooms as well. Yeah. He it's sees them down there. Straight headshot, they have no idea. <laughs> Smith's looking confused and dazed, and there's gonna be a follow-up headshot on my stuff. You gotta be kidding me. They, they still are not sure they're just getting fired at they're going down. Round after round, the boost worked to perfection. I think he's just jumping. There it is, Olaf Meister. He's raining down death from above. Not gonna do too much damage, but down in sewer. It's MPK going down. 
the pain continues. Once again here, they're trying to see if they could potentially get a cleaner shot. Look at this, now Happy getting boosted up, and he gets spotted, Oldmeister sees it coming. They've accounted for this, Fnatic. They're one step ahead. The end is near, it's five on three, and Fnatic have summoned an unbelievable comeback. They pull up an ace out the sleeve, and they do it for just every single round. They're on out, flush against the double, and it's down to Smith. No chance at all, Fnatic, they make their way to the semis of another major tournament here. Pronax with a final kill. 16-13. Destruction rained out upon LDLC. From the brink of failure, Fnatic unveiled a game-breaking strat to get themselves back in it. And it worked better than anyone could have thought. Or so it seemed, until a series of rulings traded back and forth between the two teams. Olaf's boost was placed under review, and the match was set to be replayed the next day after hours of demo review, is they found that both Smith's and Olaf Meister's boost took advantage or, or were subject to this one texture bug that, that could be applied to both of them. And so they'd found their way to just say, both of you are at fault actually, and so we'll replay. Then, in a decision that is still unclear to this day, Fnatic forfeited the match to LDLC, and overnight became the villains of CSGO. It's that hive mind, right, of the community. Um, everyone hopping on that bandwagon of, of disliking Fnatic at the time was kind of the cool thing to be doing. It was like such a low, low point. I mean, I have had m much hate uh, through through the whole career, pretty much, in CSGO. And, but this, this thing was just like, it was so much at the same time. And uh, it, it was very, very hard for, for me as well as the others. Regardless of your thoughts on the Olaf boost, Fnatic entered 2015 as the best team in the world, whether the fans liked it or not. And heading into the year's first major, they looked unstoppable. Everyone expected them to win ESL1 Katowice, and they didn't disappoint. On the other hand, they flushed Alu to the hands of JW. Get right going for the next, but Olaf Meister with a headshot picks him off. And this is the moment. Big games require big players as that bomb goes down in an IP attempt. Yet another retake. 2v3. Fnatic, they're getting these bomb punts in. They just need one more round and they'll be able to do it. Olaf Meister again hiding in the same spot up by Graveyard and Crims. Well, he's in the side. Oh, there it is. Now it's on. Exist 1v2 here. Fnatic, they could be the second or the first team to win a second championship here in Global Offensive. And Olaf Meister's playing it so safely. They know that they have it. Exist gets one and he's back on it. He's got the kit. He's holding it down. I'm not sure there's enough time. Fnatic, they do it. Ladies and gentlemen, your ESL1 Cavalita champions are Fnatic. Fnatic didn't drop a single map until the finals of Katowice, and Olaf Meister was named the tournament's MVP. Despite the fact that the hard feelings from the community still remained post-Olaf boost, Olaf himself seemed to revel in the eyes of his critics. He only got more accurate, became a better leader, and filled every role Fnatic needed him to. Quite simply, he'd reached a divine status in-game, and he wasn't about to let anyone take that away from him. What followed for Olaf and Fnatic will go down in Counter-Strike history. Leading up to the year's second major, Fnatic seemed unstoppable and looked primed to be the first team ever to win back-to-back -back majors. As ESL1 Cologne's group stage got underway, Fnatic and Olaf looked as good as ever. Olaf Meister, he's already somehow snuck all the way up through Connector in towards jungle, gets the kill, gets the FAMAS, let's see if he can get more, he does manage to get more, Flush has also taken down Grubby, and now two men remain here for E-Battle, this is a perfect position for Olaf Meister to now be sat, there's the one man taken down low, he's now all on Furlan, 16 rounds to two, an easy day at the office really for Fnatic. Trying to make the rotation, Crims Pronax all pushing in on site, has seized single-handedly, tries to keep them at bay, a deagle, a dream, and that is about all it will be. Flamey, single tap down, and that is it, ladies and gentlemen. It was all too easy for Fnatic, 16-2, as they absolutely decimate the opposition in their groups. But it was in the semi-finals that Fnatic were met with their fiercest competition, Virtus Pro. Here we go then. They're looking for something here. Snacks gets out towards sight. JW down. Crims swings his attention, but now we're seeing finally the power of Drop Neo comes in. Great play going out from Vernon's Pro here. All onto Neo to do what seems impossible. Just Neo! What was that? Neo blows 
Crim's out of the water and now it's a 1v1. 10 seconds, the bomb is a priority. He's gonna be punching the digits in and now with it down. He has the ball to play for. Pronax saves the day with two. And oh my God, is this an intense semi-final. Snax is waiting on the other side. If Olaf jumps up here, he is a dead man walking. Let's see what he does. Patience, maybe a virtue flash comes out. Here we go. Oh! Olaf is an absolute mastermind. Manages to avoid one, make two flashes as he knows that's three. He's managed to avoid them all and does keep fragging as he gets Pronax, but Crimson Olaf come alive. And now Snax and Neo have to do everything to keep Virtus Pro chances at the grand final alive. It's all on Neo. Look at this play. He takes down the bomb, but now Snax 1v2. 30 seconds. Olaf is the man to do it. And Fnatic are making their way to the finals here. Virtus Pro crumble under the sheer pressure Fnatic put on that T side. Outstanding play. In a hard fought match, Fnatic would once again show the world why they were the best. But whether it was because of their dominance or some residual hate from the Olaf boost, the team received as much hate as they did love from the community. So Olaf, that was stressful, it was emotional to watch. What was it like to play? Come on, there's only great games here. We don't have booing in esports, no booing in esports. Olaf, talk to me, what was it like to play in that match? It was a great thing to watch. Uh, it was, uh, it was uh, hard uh, mentally to play that game. Uh, we, we... Come on, guys, it was a great match. You have to cheer for both teams in great matches like that. Talk me through, what was it like to play? It was hard mentally to play that game, but uh, we... Guys, please respect for the finalists. Second finalists, please respect them. And after that win, their finals matchup against Envious wasn't in doubt. We might actually think about going for the challenge here and all up. Not in his lifetime. Kenny S just smokes him off, but Flush is not having any of it. He's going to push on through. He's going to gun down Kenny and Kiyoshima now all alive into the crosshairs of Olaf Meister. Just lines up the shot, gets the support of Flusher, and this will be Fnatic taking map one on Dust 2 1915. Just the speed coming into it here. Grenade on through and Envy. They're speeding up. JW missing a couple of shots, and they get two in return. Pronax on the back lines, and they're going to get that refrax here. Very low on health is happy and they just keep on training it through. They can't stop now. Olaf with the kill as well. It's going to be Kenny with a refract grenade on in. Happy's on six health. And ladies and gentlemen, it's going to require a miracle and nothing less for Happy to make it out. I don't think there's any chance. Flusher looking to end this. It's going to be a third title for Fnatic. They win a third major championship in global offensive. To this day, Fnatic's run in 2015 is one of the more impressive feats in the history of esports. That year, the team brought home a whopping 10 international titles and became the first team in Counter-Strike to win back-to-back Valve-sponsored majors. They were an absolute juggernaut, and at the head of the ship was Olaf Meister. With the 2016 season underway, many expected much of the same dominance from Fnatic and Olaf and the season certainly started off that way. Three versus four right now. This is looking great for Fnatic. JW taking that kill as well. Fallen and Cold Sierra. It is a two on four right now, but can they possibly retake this? It seems almost impossible. They're gonna try and take their time. Fallen goes down and there it is, ladies and gentlemen. Fnatic, your Intel Extreme Master season 10 winners. 10 years of history. IEM champions back to back in Katowice. It's Fnatic. One more time. That said, their strong start didn't last. CSGO's competitive scene was exploding around this time, and teams like Luminosity looked primed to dethrone Fnatic. At 2016's first major, MLG Columbus, Fnatic placed second in their group. But this time, things felt different. Throughout the event, Olaf was plagued with an arm injury, and Fnatic were stunned by an upstart team from Denmark. So it's a three-pronged assault from Astralis, and there we go, Crims gets taken down, it's JW left, it's match point for Astralis, JW needs to clutch, we've seen it before, we need to see it again, he needs to play out of his skin for his team to survive it, but there's too many angles, too many Astralis players, 0-2 to two, Fnatic go, Astralis move on. I don't know, it was the week or two weeks before I started feeling something was wrong in my wrist, and I got super like, I was like, I kept playing for what, like one day, and like, something 
is wrong. Like I need to take some days off and it didn't get better. And like, so basically we had no practice before going into the major. And if it was a normal tournament, I would just say, I'm not playing, like I'm, I need a break. But I couldn't like, because you can't change any players, so I couldn't leave, so I had to play. And I, I myself felt really bad. Shortly after the event, Fnatic dropped out of the upcoming DreamHack Malmo, as Olaf Meister took an extended break from pro play to nurse his injury. Olaf would then return to the Fnatic lineup in order to compete at the year's second major. But the magic just wasn't there. And Dillow is still causing problems. He's going to win an important duel, but he's heavily tagged as well. Everyone's tagged for the tease now. Can they get the bomb down? There's a player on site in Nitro. He's putting in work. Flush on Olaf Meister remaining. Down goes JDM. Everyone's tagged. It's just Olaf Meister left versus two. He's got to plant the bomb, but he's got 30 seconds to do it. Two orbs and one AK. He's not going to see the angle here. Nitro's going to take it for Liquid. 16 to 30. Wall of smokes here. JW's isolated, fighting around the forklift. But there are people going down in the middle area here. It's a four versus two. It's a four versus it's one. Krims is the last man to keep Fnatic in this. He has so many players to take down, two of which are very low. There's the first one. He gets immediately tagged in the face. This is so terrible right now for Krims. There is surely no way out. As they toy with him, Nitro will get the finishing kill and Team Liquid will eliminate Fnatic. What the hell just happened? Fnatic just weren't the team they once were, and neither was Olaf. Something needed to change. In a massive roster swap during the back half of 2016, Fnatic sent JW, Flusha, and Crims to Godsend in exchange for Twist and Lecro. At a glance, the move looked like an attempt to rebuild the team around Olaf to make another push at becoming one of the best teams in the game once again. It didn't work. Hiko dropping Olaf Meister. This is it. The team Liquid, they're in a one on five. Liquid defeat Fnatic on Dust 2. 16 14 here. They're hitting him on the other side, but now Convict's coming in from the same angle. There's Rubin with the shot, and Lecro has to come over the bomb, and that's it. Dignitas, they're gonna be in the semi-finals here at Epicenter Moscow. Now it's a two versus two, Lecro pushes the door, not gonna work out. Now it's mixed well. Full health versus Jumpy, AK versus AK. No kit on Jumpy. Continuing to run. Will he charge straight through the door? He will. Optic proceeds. Fnatic eliminated. 16 to 11. Almost as quickly as the move happened, the orgs decided to switch their players back to their original teams. Unfortunately, that reunion led to more middling results, placing inside the top three only once before an early round of eight exit from 2017's second major at PGL Krakow. Gambit playing this so smart. They understand the timing as well. They understand exactly how JW might move around the map. As we can see, Adren making his way towards teammates. JW going for the door back, and there you go. Gambit, make it work. 16-14. Yeah, that's very awkward, isn't it? However, Hobbit still holding down the position. Crimso takes down Hobbit as well. Flusher though, too weak, two HP, and now he's dead. Adren on the bomb site. Very responsible. The double peaks coming in. A solid 2-0. A 2-0 that Gambit can be proud of. Then, in one of the biggest roster moves in the history of Counter-Strike, Olaf left Fnatic. We tried everything in Fnatic. We tried so many different lineups, and I was just I just felt it was a good timing and also face. At that time, we were a lot better team than we were. Then I was just, I needed something new, I needed new motivation, and I, I felt like I got it when I joined FaZe. In addition to acquiring Olaf, FaZe Clan also signed Star Opera Guardian to pair with the likes of Nico, Rain, and Kerrigan. This iteration of FaZe Clan were immediately thrusted into the limelight and heralded as quite possibly the greatest super team in Counter-Strike history. Olaf Meister was once again at the center of the CSGO zeitgeist, but playing on a team of superstars would present a new challenge. For the first time in his career, he wasn't his team's star player. Instead, he would have to operate as a secondary fragger behind Nico and rely on his strong fundamentals to make an impact. This move would be a testament to Olaf's legacy as a player, because if he could make this work, then there wasn't anything he couldn't do. That is information though. Now, FaZe are going to pounce. They know that they can push onto this site. That there were two players there for Astralis. The flash is in. It's good. Olaf Meister takes down Dupree. Now they know where the remaining players are coming from, and it is inevitable. It is over. Zipnik's down to 5 HP, and it's not going to be enough. 16 7 win. FaZe have done it. They are your E League champions. Nenades rain. The arsenal toward the firebox in hope of a kill. All in in one position, and Guardian makes it just nice. Trying to find the flash. 
And Nico fittingly gets the last kill as FaZe dominate New York in 2017 in the Barclays Center all the way through this tournament. Of course it's funny, but Rain, there's no way to check for him. They can't trade either. Rain, of course, four versus two, doing more damage, leaving Oscar with a UMP. He's got to pick up a rifle, surely, going past the connector area. This is the end of the line for Mouse Sports. FaZe, after a massive best of three, shut down the dreams, desires of Mouse Sports and take the championship. They came into it as the favorites, and finally, they prevail. FaZe were firing on all cylinders come the Boston Major, and looked unstoppable in the new Legend stage. He's going as fast as he can. Olaf Meister gets the sound cues, and he's going to have the angle, even if there was time, which I don't think there is. Olaf Meister with a pre-fire there, and no, there isn't time. He was asking too much of himself, unfortunately. 16 to 8 is the scoreline, and that was pretty much all FaZe plan. Otherwise, he'll lose by time, of course, if he can't plant it. So he has to somehow close the distance to the bomb and then go for a plant. And so Hodgy is going for the high position. Guardian knew a dominant, absolutely crushing showing from FaZe. Just cancelling all of that. I think he got flashed as well, actually, from the other side. So time is running out. What a game it's been. 16 12 as FaZe made their way to the playoffs yet again in a major tournament. They then made quick work of Mouse Sports in the quarterfinals. And it's just Rops. Young Estonians first time in the playoffs. He's certainly impressed, but it's not been enough. The Mouse has bit the cheese, the trap is closed. 2-0 for FaZe, they'll move through to the semi-final. And our favorites move on. Before reminding Simple and Natis Vincer why they were the scene's most feared team. Great read from Zeus to hold off as well because he knew CT was oh, covered, so the event was Ness lifeless. Ness likely, I should say, what a shot from Guardian Words out of my mouth as he nails it through the box. He is tagged up. Smoke on the bomb immediately. He's got the kit. Doesn't elect to hold on to it yet. He's got oh! time to play with. And two for two, smoke will do. It's phased to the final, and Guardian is an absolute god. And there they sat, one of the most decorated teams of superstars in CSGO history, staring eye to eye with Cloud9, the scrappy underdogs who'd clawed their way to the finals. This is the final boss. This is the phase roster. Just look at this talent. It is so stacked. Because if you look at meetings this year, when they played each other, you can see Cloud9 have certainly not had the best of it. FaZe Clan seem to be their kryptonite. I think the problem here is the fact that, you know, FaZe not only won the last three encounters in a best of three, two and oh, it's in such a dominant fashion, as you guys yeah. can see, only double digits two times. Cloud9 is playing super well, but FaZe is the favorite here and they're going to play like it. After splitting the first two maps, Cloud9 and FaZe found themselves in a winner-take-all showdown on Inferno. Well, they left open quad and it may have been a misread because in goes Cloud9, but Olaf Meister has something to say. Three kills! That's a great defense from him, and Guardian starts to get in on the action as well. But Tarek, the only man, the last line of defense on the B side to be stopped by Olaf Meister and his AK. This is not a good look for Cloud9. Nothing else is going on. He's got to go back. Stewie's on his own. But look at the time. Look at the time. There's seven seconds. They've got the bomb. They're trying to build pyramids, but there's no more play. Stewie's oh! on the round. We go to overtime. It's a doodle. Repositioning after the first frag. It's both now from quad here for phase. Can Cloud9 close it? Skadoodle gets one. Skadoodle can't get the third. It's Nico with 12. Is there time, though? Is there time? I'm not sure if there is. It's going to be a close one. And he's done it. We saw it from this position before. He cannot miss a single shot. Guardian waits patiently as Cloud9 sets the push up. Oh! Oh, it's happened! They made it work! Cloud9 are your Ely Major Champions! While celebrated as one of the scene's greatest underdog stories, the Major ended in heartbreaking fashion for the European Super Team. And as the sun set on Boston, it was back to the drawing board for FaZe. Their heartbreaking loss aside, the FaZe Olaf experiment was by no means seen as a failure. They had a great showing at the Major and were still Counter-Strike's darlings in the minds of many. But what would transpire in the coming months would not bode well for them. FaZe chained their second place finish with yet another runner-up spot at IEM Katowice. They were then dispatched in the quarterfinals of 2018's second major, where they watched Astralis become the dynasty team they'd hoped to be. This is their era! This is the team to beat to be called the best! You'll face it, London Major Champions! It's Astralis!
In the wake of the London Major, FaZe and Olaf had fallen from a consensus contender to a team with a lot of question marks. In December, the team decided to bench longtime in-game leader Kerrigan after Nico took over the IGL responsibilities. No matter what happens with FaZe and Olaf Meister in 2019, one thing is certain. He will retire as one of the single greatest players in the game's history. No one will ever forget Olaf on fire. The infamous Olaf boost, the major titles, and his ability to transcend controversy and never back down from competition. But there's another story to be told. If FaZe can flip the script in 2019, if Olaf is able to rebound and challenge Astralis on the major stage, a god of Counter-Strike will rise again. And that's what makes Olaf's career just so amazing. With every blow, he finds a way to bounce back with even more ferocity. Olaf Meister has redefined what it means to be great. Because even when the crowd roared for him to fail, he was merely fueled by the adversity. And in 2019, Olaf is the underdog once again. Thanks for watching. If you want more great content just like this, be sure to hit the subscribe button.